Okay, I'm recording now. So this is Professor George Lees and John Patterson. Patterson. Now, if I give you the title of my uh, PowerPoint video, I might get my head locked off. That's okay. Well, let's take a risk, eh? It's yep. the video is called Princess Anne, Blood Sucker for a Grateful Nation. Yep. Okay. <laughs> now I've explained to you in the past how Princess Anne's uh, directory details are actually in the business directory. She trades as Lawrence, which is her married name. Yeah, She's yeah. got some listings as Anne HRH, the Princess Royal. She's only got four or five companies on that. So three companies left on that now, because a lot of the activity since we last talked about Princess Anne being on the Football World Cup commissioning bodies and the Olympic commissioning bodies and her links to Martin Sorrell have now been obfuscated slightly but she's still got directorships registered under the company number I can't, oh yes 906-928-490 she's at Aberlour House Limited Royal Yachting Association and Gordonston School Limited so she gets non-executive directorships from those three companies now the other ones are much more difficult to find uh, and you can see that she's surrounded by people that are dropping out and are changing since we began to expose them yeah, yeah. Uh, so a lot of the but I've got a list of shareholders in one of those companies or in the controlling group uh, and they've got shareholders equity figure now we're talking about I'm not sure what Aberlour House is but you've got an elite yachting association and a school to which the royals used to attend. The latest shareholders equity figure says it's seven, eight million pounds and the issued share capital was 123 quid. <laughs> yeah, all of the people are named. Gillian Burns, Joanna Grant, Peter Kinn, Christopher Stevens, Richard Marsham, David White, Richard Stephen Baldock, Sophie Kuffer, Koifer, Anne Pollock, Graham Miller, Elizabeth Margaret Kerr, Peter Ord, and George Grunebaum. Uh, okay, so I'm now going to move on to other topics. And I could not find the other directory range. I knew that it was under Lawrence. And when I looked for Lawrence, I've got this strange hit. And it was a royal princess. So I thought, I'll. Oh look a little bit deeper into this royal princess the royal princess's name is HRH Princess Basma now I hesitate to use the next word because it could be offensive in today's culture but the next word is Bint Saud Bin Abdulaziz Al Saud so that's a princess and when I look for her address it's Belmont House, Station Way, Crawley, West Sussex, United Kingdom. And the postcode is too small for me to read at this stage. But then I find that this woman is is part of the Lawrence of Arabia joke that we've talked about already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Lawrence of Arabia was seen as a you know a heroic film about a Briton who came in league with the Arabs and tried to free them from British tyranny and to make them independent nation states guess what happens this morning I find that we still have a British Arabic Chamber of Commerce and loads of profiteering villains <laughs> from exactly. both sides still involved in it but when I looked at this company that was registered in West Sussex for the princess called Al Saud uh, I find that she's a director with a secretary called Thomas Egger. Now I know the name Egger because my wife used to work when we were in Northumberland for a company called Egger that did wood chips and work surfaces. <laughs> yeah, now that, that's a German company and I've not got no idea where this one originates from. But you, when you look at the list of the companies that are under Thomas Egger Secretaries Limited, 
you find the Global United Centre for Research and Analysis Limited registered in West Sussex. <laughs> wow. That's the, and it's only got a couple of directors on it as if it was a fraud and a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> and you've got the Lanterns United Global, Lasartist Limited, Global Media Echo Limited, Fish Me Limited. You understand the fish joke now that I've, yeah. all I've told you about? Yeah. loaves and fishes and hot dogs and penises being chucked over castle walls in yeah. sandwiches okay Craze Brasseries Limited and Dubai Limited those are just some of the names and I've got images of Lawrence of Arabia up front then when you look a bit closer about who Thomas Egger secretaries are and who HRN Princess Basma bin Saud bin Al Saud actually trade with you find that they're f close friends of your neighbours can you guess who I'm talking about? not the um, not the Billinghams no Brighton Directors Limited and Brighton Secretaries Limited with oh, yeah, 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 yeah. ultra thin blue lines so that they can money launder out of Britain into Arabia if they wish to or into the Caymans if it comes up their back they do not work hard at any of these things they have functionaries appointed to steal from them let me list the only director I can see at this company at the top above Thomas Egger secretaries and Brighton directors and Brighton secretaries is Mr. She Eryar Salim Sayed so there's a strong Arab UK affiliation here with a little bit of German thrown in for good measure. Yeah, yeah. Next slide, as they used to say in the death PowerPoint thing. Uh, it's so small that I cannot see it, but it's it's the Global United Centre for, and it actually it is just a vent for HRH Prismas, Princess Basma bin whatever it was Saud. Uh, she's just running a series of Ponzi scams from the United K Kingdom using the director number 082197708 Global United Centre for Research it's a money laundering vent now this woman has a if you look her up on Wikipedia and you listen to the video again and then look her up you'll see that she is one of 125 plus wives of the Saudi Sheikh <sighs> <laughs> Uh, and she's now made her career in the UK she lives in London and they're making lots of money out of fraud so that's an aside really because what I really wanted to talk about was bigger issues and oh, bigger, bigger issues so have we got time or shall we make a separate oh, video no, we've got time George okay so you know that I've now discovered the the potency of company check and I was looking around company check for friends of the Rothschilds dynasty which Gordon Bowden would never let me do because Gordon Bowden clearly gets some sort of kickback from the really powerful people in the UK to talk about relatively minor frauds okay uh, if Gordon Bowden has the courage to contact me again on Skype he can deny that uh, but yeah, yeah. And now I have the opportunity to talk to you about the Rothschilds yeah. and people that link into the Rothschilds one of whom is Peter Charles Percival Hambro now we've talked a lot about the Hambros uh, some of the local aristocracy are married to Hambros here in this region the Hambros run the SOE in World War II and they ran interests in Norwegian banking and in Northern European banking throughout the whole of the profiteering conflict between 1939 and 1945. So you can see why I use Peter Charles Percival Hambro as a sparking point and I begin to look for overlapping directors yeah, yeah, yeah. who might be profiteers in the geopolitical or warmongering sectors and guess who I come up with Field Marshal, the Lord Charles Ronald 
Llewellyn Guthrie. Gordon would not allow me to talk about Guthrie a lot, mm. other than he was a director from 2001 when he was made a Tony Blair life peer. This is a NATO general yeah, when he yeah. was still in NATO's armies, highly decorated, member of the Order of Malta and all those things that the Queen gives yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, On the board of the NM Rothschild Bank, which Gordon would occasionally let me talk about, provided I concluded my rants at Norman Lamont and I went no higher up the food chain. He would yeah. not let me talk about the Rothschilds at the top of the food chain. Okay, so what I find is that the overlaps between Percy Hambro and Field Marshal the Lord Guthrie are in one case through the Russo-British Chamber of Commerce. Mm. Remember we've told you that there are Rothschilds and Kissingers on the yeah, board yeah. of the Future of Russia Foundation. Yeah. So we've got a Russo-British Chamber of Commerce registered address 11 Belgrave Road Victoria London Southwest 1 V 1 RB Director mm. number 4 Guthrie is 0014514040 Okay so we've got a Chamber of Commerce and Putin has recently been accused by Prince Charles who's funded entirely by the Rothschilds by, for centuries and is sired, his whole family is sired by the Rothschilds since Queen Victoria was in power. Yeah. Yeah, he demonizes the Russians for brutalizing their own economic prospects. It is heresy and hypocrisy on a grand level. Let me read out the names that I've got on the Russia Britain, British Chamber of Commerce just because they're there. Uh, they were appointed and the company that ties in uh, Lord Guthrie is a company called Petro Pavlov SK PLC. Now do you get the joke there? Do you know who Pavlov was? Pavlov dogs. Yeah. So they've got you've got them salivating for yeah, oil yeah. wealth, other people's oil wealth. Yeah. Yeah, you understand the merger of BP and Rosneft a couple of years ago? Yeah. You understand the entirely western owned Gazprom? Yeah. Yeah. You can see that the whole of the crisis in Ukraine and in Eastern Europe is there to take the attention away from the profiteers. Now that they control the issuance of money in those countries, and it was Tony Blair that appointed Guthrie so that he could lead us into Iraq, the, the terminal phases in Iraq were entirely Tony Blair's creation so that we could sequester their issuance of money and yep. then we could take NATO's armies into the Balkans using a relatively young general, Sir Charles Guthrie at that time, before he was a not even a field marshal yeah this man lives in Dundee where they're now sacking innocent academics who have worked as research professors in the genetics department they get paid no redundancy payment when they are thrown onto the streets by the elite university led by Brian Cox the actor who has changed his name at least twice and is the only man in these sagas who I cannot find at all on the business directories, although he has several homes in America. Well, I can tell you something, Sean. Sure. There's some very important people that um, I'd like to hear this. Okay. Well, it's you know it's just terrible, and you know Hambro's involved. We talk about the geopolitical manipulation of the news, so Hambro is involved in the Invicta Film Partnership number 43 LLP. Yet yeah, we've talked about Ingenious Films, we've talked about the Parliamentary Film Company, their roles in non-existent oil and gas frauds, we've talked about a company that is 
where the director is a member of the NM Rothschild Bank. I've got no idea whether Petro Pavlov SK PLC is actually a productive company, but you can bet your boots that all of the directors and the funding banks that control them are absolute trillionaires already. Yes. Yeah, it is massive. Okay, so here are some of the directors on Petro Pavlovsk. Uh, you've got, uh, oh, I cannot pronounce them, Alfaya, Samu Kavalova, Dr. David Selwyn, Senric Humphreys, sounds like a Brit, Dr. Graham John Birch. Now, that could have been John Birch, who, oh, no, that was John Birch, who was head of the BBC at one time. Field Marshal, the Lord, we've got Guthrie there just for evidence, Mr. Alexei, Pavlovich Maslovsky and they on the Invi Invicta Film Partnership we've got Raul Vinder Singh Rai Dr. Ali Reza Najafi Dr. John Campbell Dr. Diagna Faye uh, and it's you know it's everywhere there are networks of corruption led by NATO's generals who lead the troops in so that the land grabs can be efficiently managed and everything comes back to the Rothschild power base who then control the issuance of money in every country that is brutalized that way so that every country runs in a sovereign debt crisis like the UK is now in entirely by design okay uh, now uh, this now takes me to the thing that made me feel sick this morning, yeah, yeah. which is the writing of the Christian Bible. We need to make a separate episode about that, but I learned this morning that, you know, in the last hundred years or so, since we started reforming the Bible under the reign of uh, King John, no, no, the... the it's the official Bible is the King James Bible. So Scotland is ever so proud that when England had its first king named James, Scotland had already had six kings using that name already. So it's James the first of England, James the sixth of Scotland, became the authorized figurehead and sponsor of the Christian Bible. But because he united the United Kingdom, he became the King of Britain and Ireland for the first time in a long time. His mum was executed because <laughs> she was a threat and she was a Catholic. But it is relatively unimportant. The man, King James, who approved of the Christian Bible, if you read his Wikipedia entries, it looks as if he was gay and incapable of having heirs. Uh, but what he is capable of doing is condoning the Christian Bible on both sides of the border. Instead of writing a Christian Bible for the United Kingdom, because he was appointed, he was coronated or crowned aged 13 months. All of the, all of the dates are spookily Freemasonic. I think I mentioned that there are 66 books in that Christian Bible. Yeah. Yeah. That the that the release date for the Bible was what was it? Uh, sixteen eleven. Sixteen eleven, uh, and that then adds then up. Had, then we had the false flag fire of London, sixteen sixty six. Yeah. Yeah. If you just read the creation of the the St James's Bible in Wikipedia, and you see the names Norton and uh, I've said it before in the run up to the interview here but it, they will change it really quickly now that they know it's been exposed but what it took me into were the more recent changes which were run entirely by Cambridge University Press and Oxford University Press you rem can you remember someone in the intel sector who worked for or owned Oxford University Press owned it. Yeah, Oxford University Press owned Oxford United Football Club, was never found dead off the back of his boat like Bin Laden. Oh. I forget what the name of the guy was. He yes. was a 
he, he was a British spy in Czechoslovakia. He yeah. worked with Breden Camp's friends out there, according to Gordon Bowden's mates, in the you know the false flag news sector, who used to ring me up to try and divert me from taking the world. You know, I used to try and prevent the brutalisation of Syria when the weapons scams were happening there. Uh, and I used to always be interrupted by phone calls by the people that Gordon described as M. They would give me a rant on the same topic again and again, and then they would accuse me of spelling the words that they put into my head wrongly when I published it on my Facebook page. Okay. But now I'm allowed to talk about the big tyranny, the falsification of Christianity and all of the messianic religions on our globe all of whom have been created for mind control since the piezo thing that we know all about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when you look at Cambridge University Press, you see the links to the Ponzi shelves, and you see the links to M&R 1038 Limited, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Holdings Limited, listed on the same fraudulent list. Yeah. So we can talk about that, but I encourage you to download and save in an email the Wikipedia entry for the King James Bible. Okay. And when you read it, the tears will come into your eyes like they did to mine this morning. Because it underpills, underpins all of the martyrdom. It underpins at the King's call the killing of all of Britain's war dead in centuries old conflicts for 2,000 years. It's just a joke. That's why they wear the white on the rugby pitch. Yeah, the, the rugby players get conscripted. The politicians never do. They run the draft board. They run the Church of Scotland. They run the Church of England. And they run massive estates where they let the serfs and the servants get shagged in the downstairs sector. And then they invent nuns to look after the orphaned children who end up getting preferential treatment in schools like Dunblane, which is an orphan school for military orphans. So they brutalise and kill the parents and then they do what they wish with the children. Oh, it's, too much. Uh, it's just sickening. But you should read before they obfuscate it, the, okay, the King well, James I'm, Bible. I'm check it out now, they've dropped me out of this six times. Okay. I've, got, I've got three minutes of powerful stuff and I'm going to, I'm going to save it now. Okay, cheers for now. I'll talk to you later. And I've okay. got loads more in my head. You take care. Okay, cheers, John. Cheers, mate.